Welcome everybody to this second PCB Investigator physics simulation tutorial where I want to show you how the thermal behavior of the board which we simulated in the first tutorial can be improved by changing the materials. Before we start I will reopen the last simulation result from our video tutorial number one. As you can see here we have the small motor driver board and I will open the simulation result of our tutorial one and as you maybe remember we have a temperature on this board between 20 degrees which was the environmental temperature and 142.6 degrees at maximum underneath these components. Before we start with the new simulation with other PCB materials I'd like to add some notes um, to have a better comparison at the end. So I will start adding the automatic in and out notes and just move them a little bit around. So we had um, two outputs here and another one here and another one here. We had an input pin here and another input pin here. the outs here, ok, and we had this component U1 with 4 watts power loss and the D9 with 0 0.5 watt power loss. I will now add a few additional nodes marking the temperature of a certain location on the board. So we have 82 degrees on this component, 142.6 degrees on this component, and then looking at the component top, uh, at the signal layer top, we had 139 degrees underneath the component and I will just add a few other nodes here to see how the head heat is spreading and I will add one here and add one here and a few others. Just align them a little bit last one here. And I will do the same on the bottom layer and also add a few nodes here. So we have 126 degrees on the bottom layer and I just add a few nodes so that at the end we can compare them between this design without any optimization and the following optimizations in the following tutorials. Okay, so now I will export those nodes and add it into this XML file here so I can reload it after the, um, the other simulations again. And I also will do a printout in a PDF document. So therefore I activate the layers I want to print and then go to print here, print it into a PDF, OK and I want to print it in result of tutorial 1 and I add one page per layer. So now he's creating the PDF document and I will show you this document now. So what we see is um, the component top layer, the signal layer top and the signal layer bottom including all the marked points and the in and outs. So at the end we'll have good comparison also in this PDF document. Okay, so now let's start with a new simulation. Um, I go to the physics menu and enter new physics simulation parameters. So first, first of all we call it tutorial 2. We want to simulate the voltage drop, the temperature and this on the complete board but we want to change some materials here. Currently we use normal F04 material and uh, which is new in the version V8 of PCB Investigator Physics is that we have a new material library 
we have some local design materials and we have a global material library and um, as you see here we have a different FFR in this case this is a Mitsubishi material and it has a little bit different thermal conductivity and specific heat capacity as the normal standard FF4 material which is included in PCB investigator physics. So what we will do is we add this FF4 to our local design materials and now we can assign it to our prepreg and to the space of our uh, copper layers. The other properties like the height of the stack up layers will keep will be keep the same. Also the currents we don't change anything here and also the power losses we have the U1 with 4 watts, the D9 with 0.5 watts and the other components are just added with 0 watt but um, in this uh, w when doing this they will be also used in the simulation to calculate the temperature of these components. The environment is still 20 degrees and we have a heat exchange of 13 as we have done in tutorial 1. So now we start the simulation with the same parameters. Okay, so now we can look at the result of our second simulation. I will again activate the temperature overlay and we see that we have a maximum temperature of 135 degrees. So this is around about 7 degrees less than in our first simulation. To have a direct comparison I have to change the color range. So I can right click here and set the color range to the values we had in the first simulation so 132.6 degrees apply so now we have a slightly smaller color range and less red but also have the same color for the same degree as in the first tutorial second thing I will do I will import the notes of our first tutorial so I import the notes of our first tutorial and of course what I have to do is to act to, to update the texts so I will select all and say update text so now we have the right values the new values okay so now again I will do a printout I print it in PDF I call it tutorial 2 and I will print one page per layer again. So now when we compare the two PDFs I will align them next to each other Yeah, now we see we have 140 degrees here, 135 degrees here and on the other layers we see a slightly better heat transfer into, into the layers. So we see 75.7 .7 degrees here, 75 degrees here, so more heat is coming down here. So the heat spreads a little bit better with the new material and therefore we have 7 degrees less at our hotspot. Of course we can also compare these results directly in PCB Investigator Physics by loading one tutorial or and afterwards the other one and can interactively measure certain points here. Also possible would be to switch to our 3D view and also in this um, it would be possible to activate the overlay 
So when I regenerate the model now, I see directly where the heat is going, which component is hot, and how the heat spreads through the copper layers. Okay, so as a result of this first layout adaptation by changing the materials of the stack up to another FR4 material, we see that we have approximately 7 degrees less at our hotspot, the U1 component here. That is not very much, but in the next tutorial I will show you how we can still decrease this um, by changing some copper areas. So thank you very much for watching and please watch out for tutorial number three.